So, hi, Darren. Thank you for coming in today. Yeah, we were thinking about starting a podcast, but we, you know, we don't really, we're not really sure why or how. What, you know, why do you think we need a podcast? What's, what's that going to do for us? Got to reverse engineer it, right? So, if you go back, I focus first on the content. Mm. So, what do you do in your business, right? Let's say you run a sales automation SaaS company. Great. Right? Like Lempire. Lempire, we're starting a podcast. Okay, we're doing this in a way to, what's the goal? Traffic, they want traffic to their business and revenue. So they'll want to increase the revenue so people buy their software, but they also want to increase the traffic. So without traffic, you can't increase revenue and without good content, you can't get the traffic, right? So it's, yes. like, a, it's like a nuanced approach. It is, is it, do you think so? I think it's a small world because what we see on the internet is a small sliver of what's happening in reality. Because yeah. we think that there's so many podcasts in the world. We think there's so many like, creators in the world. We think there's too many entrepreneurs. We think that niches, niches are filled up and businesses are saturated. <laughs> but the reality is on the ground, it's completely different. That's true, So yeah. if you're searching for a few podcasts, you only ever see the top five of them. I often you know, filter Dubai podcasts and I see, I see like seven different people. Mm-hmm. There's obviously mm-hmm. a lot more. Yes, but, exactly, you know, yeah. Well, not in my instance, but usually the best filter to the top. So that's where you, it's like a survivorship bias. We only see the ones that are like the most active. We only see things ones, that are more yeah. successful. Yeah. We only see the top entrepreneurs. But in the reality, there actually is a lot more people that are doing well. Absolutely. So I think like so for someone like yourself, that's early in the journey. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Just putting time, it's putting the time in, putting the reps in. And man, when I set up like this, yeah. I'm excited for it. Yeah, no, I appreciate And thank you very much for the kind words, man. You know, we've done, I've done over, over 100 episodes now. So mm-hmm. this is, um, so, and I was looking, I'm like, let's see. And I always, I met this guy recently at a, this isn't usually how I start my recordings, but we're just in, so fuck it. Let's get it. Um, the, uh, I met him uh, and he has a massive podcast in the UK. Um, and he was telling me how, uh, I'm like, yeah, I just completed, you know, done over 100, you know, would love to have you on the show. And he's like, oh, I've done 100. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, now you're a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> but man, it's, you're only getting started, though. I know. Right? That's the, and that's the crazy part. I feel like um, I've done so much, and yet I've kind of like... I kind of got here just doing what I thought was right, you know, and now it's kind of like, all right, we've done a hundred one way. Mm. How are we do want to do the next like hundred or the next 10 or the next 15? How can we keep iterating and, you know, improving on that? And I'm sure you've done, uh, I think over 200 by now. It's over 200, so but it's like a business, that's right? That's fucking amazing, man. Congratulations. That's but a man, lot. You, you first fall and then <laughs> yeah. you, first you crawl, then you fall yes. and then you get up and you walk and then you try yes. to run, right? But you know, when you see an ultra marathon runner doing 200 kilometers on a weekend, he started off running 5Ks, right? And it's a slow evolution that goes over time. Mm. I don't think we kind of understand that, right? When you see like Michael Jordan, you know, the kid was like just in his backyard and doing it every single day, right? And if you apply like an athlete mindset to whatever you're doing, you're inevitably going to get better and it's all about doing it for 100 weeks straight, right? That's what I'm trying to ultimately play is an infinite game and yeah. how we can, how we do one thing is how we do everything. So if you're podcasting and you're getting in the space and you've done a year or two, it's amazing. But now it's not about doing the task, it's about doing it better. So Hormozy hey. talks about, you know, more, more, better, that kind of approach. So initially you just got to do more, right? But to get quality, you mm. need to do quantity. Yes. And to get the quantity, <laughs> you need to improve the quality, right? And a lot of the time what we see, like the perceived small changes may not may seem quite nuanced. But man, if you look back three months ago or six months ago at your work or especially even like my work, the changes are absolutely crazy and they're, yeah. they're, they just stack up over time and that's kind of like what we're searching for and I think the beautiful thing about podcasting and content and this kind of game is that you're ideally doing this forever most people get into business to, to exit or to just make money whatever but something like this is a pursuit you go on forever like mm-hmm. you don't conquer podcasting you just keep going mm-hmm. you don't finish mm-hmm. in business you just keep going you don't finish in fitness you don't end right there's no end goal to it and Usually people that are most disgruntled or have the worst results are the people who look at it with a finished mindset. Mm. So they do, let's say, we we'll compare it to fitness. They'll do a series of uh, training and dieting and then they'll reach into the diet and they'll blow out and let's say spill over with bad food or so on. And that is an abstract example of how that can be applied to everything. Absolutely, yeah. Right? It's kind of like when you know people talk about hitting like $10,000 a month in your business. People get to that point and they think like, what's next? 
But if you start with the end goal in mind, which for me has always been impact, mm. it's just the biggest impact possible yeah. from the podcast, from the company, from everything. If you start with an impact play, then it's it's inevitable that you're going to make that impact over time, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I love the analogy you use bringing it into like fitness and everything sports is and fitness. everything. You know what I mean? All <laughs> this, everything goes back to fitness. It, 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 honestly, you know, 100% it does. Only, um, so only I'd say the last six, seven months have I really, I was like way overweight and stuff and whatever. And I'm like, you know what? And I've been, been there before and I gained it back. So now hmm. I'm like, okay, this time, there's always, you know, what I... I've learned is no matter how like having uh, this is a bit of topic for us but I think it's an area we can we both are probably interested in mm -hmm. is the importance of having a routine and the importance of I'm doing these things just for like Khaled or I'm doing these mm -hmm. things just for Darren like what's important to me like take care of my health you know making my podcast good blah 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 but a key thing that you said is like that, which I think people forget sometimes, is like this is not a finite game. <laughs> That's and I think we we're not good as people of living in an infinite world. Mm -hmm. We need to have something finite to for us to as our reference of are we doing well, are we not? And you know how you're saying with every podcast, even in a short time, you want to improve, you want to do better. So I I met with the head of Apple Podcasts here. And we had like a really good conversation and I was getting his take. I'm like, what do you think? Is podcasting here to stay? Is it going to change? And, you know, because you see people doing this and that. He's like, the problem, his perspective was the problem with podcasting is nowadays everyone's looking like you have your own show, but you're looking left and right. Like, oh, what is he doing? Oh, what is that guy doing? And what is that? Instead of just, just putting like blinders on and just you know being focused and doing what you think you need to do and just mm -hmm. improving in your area or what you want to do for your own show that should be your priority instead of looking the other way now i'm a bit in the middle when it comes to this because i'm like yes half of me is like i get i get what he's saying because you can only you're only going to do it your way in the end mm. But I think like what, the things I've learned about like thumbnails and titles and all that, I didn't, I learned that from looking at other people, you know, from yeah. looking at people, even your work and like your titles and I'm paying attention to all these like little things. So it's like, how do I, you need to have blinders on, but it also is smart to look around because you're going to understand how that game is played. Of course, but there's, it's nuanced, right? Because in like the social media world, the only way you can take inspiration is from other people in social media to some degree, right? But you go back to what your center point is. So for my podcast, it's like helping young people live a richer and more fulfilling life. So I just have to beat that drum every single day. Guess, topics, concepts, ideas, designs. However, I take inspiration from other people. It's benchmarking, right? You do a benchmark. I used to work in finance and we used to build like tech products. When we did stuff like that, we didn't randomly open up a piece of paper and say, what do people want? We looked at the industry. Mm. We looked at the top five competitors and saw what they were doing and tried to make it better. So it's looking at that from that perspective, but it's all about framing. Because if I look at it from perspective of being like, well, fuck that dude, their thumbnails are better and da 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 da, I can have like uh, envy and jealousy. Whereas if I'm looking inward and saying, okay, I like what that's happening here. Let's see how this applies to my concept. It's exact same in business. Mm. So there needs to be a combination of both. If you know you're onto a winner, so let's say you found podcast market fit or content, content market fit and things are working pretty well, then you just have to keep on going. Mm. When you have that shiny penny syndrome of like what's going on around you, it's completely, it's the wrong way to view it. Now, I was with someone yesterday who said, you know, you interview like, you know, literally millionaires every single week. Do you ever get shiny penny syndrome, shiny object penny syndrome? And I said, no, not really, because at the end of the day, every vehicle works, every business model works, every business works. It's all about the individual. So I learn from people and learn that, okay, this person is doing coaching, this person doing courses, this person has SaaS. Okay, that just means that my vehicle can also work, right? Versus thinking, oh God, I need to go build this platform and that platform and this mm -hmm. platform. So you need to be able to cherry pick what you want from individuals or what you want to gain from people, right? A lot of my podcasts are, they're tactical. They're like how to do this, but they're also more personal. 
because it's more about that inner journey, right? And the more inner work you do, the better you become as an entrepreneur, as a creator, as an individual. So a lot of times my content was stuck doing nothing because I wasn't a person that could grow with the content, right? I wasn't that individual that could connect with listeners so that they were like, okay, Darren is someone who's trustworthy that we can come to every single Wednesday and every single Sunday to learn from. So I kind of had to do did that inner work. So that's a combination of me understanding how to position myself as an individual, mm-hmm. but also to do the work and get the experience so that I could share it and it would be valuable to other people. Yeah. So basically, the better I became as an entrepreneur, the more I, I spent with my you know foot in the fire to money degree, the better I became as like a podcast host. And mm. that isn't me. That's a lot of my feedback from people being like, hey, we've seen like as you've grown, we're getting more enjoyment out of these podcasts. We're getting more value from it. It's that feedback loop. And I think, again, if you remove the outcome, so let's say the outcome some people want to attach, attach is money, or status or relationships. If you remove the outcome and you just focus on the inputs, so how can I literally get 1% better every single day and really walk down that process and be very, very diligent with this, looking at episodes, seeing am I better, am I worse, looking at content, is it better, is it worse? Because people have this notion that their life is gonna be linear, it's gonna move continuously upwards in the right trajectory as well. But there has to be corrections in the market. Absolutely. There has to be correct corrections in your own process. And the more you can self-correct and self-regulate, you're not going to go down this path of literally degeneracy and going down the wrong way. Mm. Because if you don't start with an end in mind, you're going to look at all the people around you. You know, we're in Dubai. It's a wealthy place. You can do two things in Dubai. Well, you can do multiple things. But you can, <laughs> you can split your time, especially as a foreigner, in two different ways. You can go down the partying and going out and the yachts and da 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 and chasing girls time and place for that or you can go down the self-development and, and business route which is why you build a great network build great people and record great podcasts like this and it's all about where you are in your journey right because if you don't have the right plan you're going to be assigned a plan and you're mm. going to be doing something that you really don't want to do mm. over a long period yeah uh, I I love that I love that last bit that you talked about having you know the importance of having a plan and this is something that I don't know about um, your 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 podcasting story but mine was never um, it was never a plan podcasting was always something that it had such a massive impact on my life mm-hmm. you know when I went on began my own uh, building what you said personal development and growth journey what was I where was I consuming that knowledge podcast who were your biggest influences. Oh, well, the one episode that changed my entire life was on a podcast called London Real. The host is called uh, Brian Rose, uh, if you're familiar. He had an episode with a guy called Dan Pena. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, don't ask me why that episode, there was something about it, you know, stars aligned. I was supposed to watch at that moment, at that time, at that point in my life to that I tell everyone that moment is the catalyst for the person you see sitting in front of you today. Everything that happened that. since that six years ago, everything has made me to this. It was that moment, but guaranteed. I was quite similar. Uh, um, you had something too, yeah. So for me, it was like Tim Ferriss, and there was two. Oh, there was two inferences, right? So I was in university, and like I'm like a C student, D student, right? And I was getting up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to be in the gym before I could go into the library. And I would go into a library with no windows and I would study for 12 hours a day because I wasn't a good student, but I had to make myself a Mm. good student. Mm. So I had to go through that path. And I remember continuously getting up 6 a.m., 5 a.m., getting to the gym. And I was waiting for my friend to collect me. And I was listening to a podcast with Tim Ferriss. And he was talking to, I think, one of the founders of either MailChimp or ConvertKit or something like this. The guy was walking through how at the point he was in his accounting career, he was working this nine to five and he, he hated it, he bought the light, da, 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 da. and at the time he was building this like SaaS tool or this micro startup on the side. And he mm. would get up, he would stay up till like two AM every single night. He did it for months and months and months getting product market fit. And eventually he was able to leave his accounting job to go down that route. And I guess in my head just everything aligned. And mm. it was just like, yes, I have been on this path and I didn't necessarily want to be on that path and now I need to kind of get off the path. And I tried to build multiple startups afterwards. I tried to build a passport app. I tried to build a digital passport. Bear in mind, obviously I didn't get funding for it. I was going to that. <laughs> and then I tried, man, this is, I'll tell you a story. You might just be, you might honestly with that, you might just be a, a couple of years ahead of your time. That's it. But what's funny was, you know it, what was I, actually, you know what I mean? it was actually pretty close to covid too right okay oh uh, wow oh wow <laughs> yeah you're, you're gonna find this funny man so uh, this is 100 percent factual so i was like 
you know, fuck this physical stuff, <laughs> fuck losing passports. I was like, I'm going to build a passport app, right? Okay. So I was living in Dublin and I did a prototype on like Figma or like Balsamic, some shitty website. And then I went to Dublin airport and I went to the departure lounge. And as people were going through the scanner passport, I would wait at the departure gate and I'd go around and interview people. And I'd be like, hey, you know, do you lose your passport when you're traveling? And they're like, yeah, all the time. I'm like, how much of this pain is it? How much worry do you have that you're going to lose your passport when you're in like Thailand, Vietnam, Bali, all these places? They were like, this is a massive problem. And I was like 20 years old, walking around the airport. I literally looked like an airport <laughs> risk. And I was interviewing people. And I was like, would you buy, uh, would you use a digital passport? And they were like, yeah, yeah, I definitely use it. And they're like, what concerns would you have? And I'd find out all these concerns. And I'd go back and build it. And then I was on the, on the call with angel investors at the same time being like, yeah, I'm going to take 20. I'm trying to build this app. <laughs> Any chance you give me money? And they were like, how much money do you need? I'm like, uh, I don't really know. So it was good in principle. Absolutely. But man, it's the, it's the drive, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck the outcome. Yeah, I know, I know shit about the outcome right <laughs> and then i stopped doing that and i was like well that's tough right and building like a startup building a tech startup yeah. is like rough man it's rough so i kind of wanted to like leave that world but those instances are like they're just so important oh yeah man. you know and like we're like at a really good point in our business like we're high profitability cash flow business great margins great team good clients but that still is that stuff was actually most important because mm, yeah going up to people and being like hey like would you buy an, a passport app and they were like fuck you yeah that's what you need like you need that welcome to feedback. sales man yeah, well, yeah. welcome to the real the world, real world right? exactly yeah yeah so it's <laughs> first of all i there's look i i admire people like you who do things that i let's say let's say if there's um my my analogy for life that i've that I've realized and I tell this everyone and I've said it a thousand times, you're gonna hit it now more a thousand fucking times, guys. <laughs> because it just, for me, this is the way the world works. Life is the, the you know that famous saying, there's levels to this game, oh. right? So let's say, me and you uh, are, we both have drive, okay? Your, my, let's say my drive though is at a level two. Mm. Yours is at a level like five. So we're both driven, but we're both driven to different extents. So everything in life, when it comes to whether that's an opinion about something you're like, dislike, whatever, there's a level to it that you feel that I might not, I might be either more, more intense, less intense and so on. So when people do th things like that, I'm like, oh, that's, he's in, he's on that, he's in drive level three. I'm, mm. I'm still in two. And I admire it because I'm like, ah, okay those experiences and th that's the kind of stuff that y I need to be doing for example to build my own business and mm. if it's and I really wanted to sit down with you today that today Darren because we do the exact same thing but we do it in we have but we have different approaches and I wanted to sit with it's rare to sit with there's not many people who do what we do mm. in my opinion there's at, at least in the region there it's broken down into a couple ways either you're going to be um, um, a lot of marketing companies now are offering podcast services but, you know, with all due respect, just because you have production equipment doesn't mean you know what the fuck a podcast is. Yeah. But, you know, they see it as an additional revenue tool. So, like, why not? Um, podcast networks. That's the other, you know, big one. And independent contractors like myself or like you are rare. I haven't met too many. I could be wrong. Maybe there's a lot out there that I don't know about. When it comes to podcasting, what I've realized in my experience is... And I'd like to hear what, what you've thought, because I think people underestimate podcasting. I think even, even when I started, I remember I'm like, oh, what's a podcast? Two mics, you just put mm -hmm. on two mics, sit down and have a conversation. This is before video even came into the picture. And then when you go through the process of like doing it consistently and like mine was a weekly podcast that first year was like to consistently be putting out content and so on. There's so much more that goes into podcasting than if you don't know whether you're a business or an individual. And if you're, if you're serious about it, if you want to do it right, mm -hmm. there's a, it takes a lot of work. If you don't do it right, then yeah, you can get away with doing you know, shortcuts here, whatever. So what, is, what are your thoughts when it comes to that? Because you've been doing it for a while too. So that's when I reflect back, I'm like, how naive was I? And now when I talk to clients, I'm like, oh, I remember after we finished recording their first episode, <laughs> they called me, they're like, Khaled, do we have to do all of this again for episode two? I'm like, you have to do this for every single episode, guys. Imagine like, producing yeah. the thing, right? 
produce, oh, sorry, producing research questions, you know, and so on. So, yeah. So, like, for context, <laughs> we've produced 500 episodes in the past year, right? In the past year? In the past year. 500 episodes in the past, <laughs> in the past year. year how the fuck did you do that it's a systems and process man at the end of the day right but to understand to answer your question Jesus. it's brutal right and like the process of running a show continuously is brutal because as you said you can go zero to one with just like anything in your phone but that's not where it is anymore the market has changed and it's super competitive now and there's we're moving really quickly so you're either going to be someone like blockbuster who's left behind or you're going to be netflix and you're moving forward right so if the market is moving forward number one no one cares what your opinion is on it you have to move with it yeah so if we're moving into this video first world bear in mind i think i was one of the first people in the world to call that podcasting would be video first in 2020 i was literally on linkedin you could find a post and i was like this podcast stuff is like bullshit. I was like, these hosting platforms suck. I was like, YouTube is going to run the game. And I had so much negative feedback from people. They were like, oh, why are you trying to change this? It should be audio only. Forget all those like YouTubers and vloggers. And I was like, no, the future is going to be video. And the whole world is all going to be driven around podcasting because everyone's going to be automated. Everyone's going to be outsourced. And we're going to go back to this human connection. This is what people want. Yeah. And they need to see you before they hear you, before they buy you. Yeah. And you, and when you said, I remember you said, because I, I did your, I did your um, you know how you have that free like roadmap course, yeah. or whatever. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, let me, let me, let me just go through this. I was like, I think it was a 15 minute, that, that short video. And I'm like, let me see Darren's thought process when it comes to I'm like is mine similar to him are we are there areas that were different mm -hmm. there were some things you were talking about um like one thing that you said and I think and I've been having conversations with people that are like quite close to me and getting feedback on how I can improve the show and so on one thing you said and when you said that I'm like uh, and it's been coming up a lot in my head recently is consistent branding Mm. and that is something that for sure across like my podcast like that hasn't been the case and i never had three cameras and i didn't have the same setup always in different places and stuff so on um but when i watch for example looking at your content and if i look at other podcasts that i follow as well i know what i'm getting mm. like when i look at yours i'm like i know what the thumbnail's gonna what the thumbnail's gonna be i know I know the kind of vibe like Darren's gonna be like of the like environment, you know, with the with right? the two lights exactly. Right. I never realized how important that was until recently. But that's what marketing is. Marketing is is finding what your 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 voice is, finding what your message is, and then beating the same drum forever and ever mm. until people work with you. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's effectively what marketing is, and then brand is basically how other people perceive what you do yeah so your brand isn't your logo your brand is what you say about my podcast when i'm in bali and you're here that's what brand is and how you perceive me is what branding is yeah but then to go through like that process right so when people are doing it themselves like they just they hack it together and they think that the work stops when you press publish but the work starts when you press publish because the brutal reality is growing a podcast is not about audio. Like I always get, I, I drill this into all of our clients. I'm like, hey, like Apple and Spotify, those platforms suck and growing them sucks ass and there's no, there's no discoverability, there's no SEO. It's, it's awful in the back end. But YouTube is this gift that keeps on giving. It's basically this person that will come and help you every single day because YouTube, the way it's set up is just beautiful, right? It has continuous search, continuous views, it's a brilliant platform. And as a result, we need to optimize for that. Now that means your videos need to be even better. Mm. That means your scripts need to be good, your mm. titles need to be good, so on. But all the other stuff, like the production management and everything, people get bogged down on that. That's fulfillment hell, right? They get stuck in that. They go over the same episode again and again and again, whereas you just want to ship the thing, right? Go into it with a good structure. That's what I always think about, right? So get your, get your ducks in a row. Good mic, good camera, good questions. Don't be a dumbass. Don't like mess up deliberately and all this. Just be a professional. And yeah, just go from being yeah. amateur to being a pro and then just ship the damn thing. And when it's out then, all of the value will come from repurposing, showing up on LinkedIn, yeah. being an authority, being an influence figure because it's 80-20. Everything in life is 80-20, right? If you spend 20% of your time just focusing on getting 80% of the work up and then churning out excellent episodes and keep on going, you will grow 
week over week, month over month. But if you keep twisting small, tiny knobs and going around in circles, it's to no one's benefit. Mm. Look at the best startups in the world. Mm. They don't go over and over again. They just ship the damn thing. I was working the biggest fintech companies in the world. We would ship products that were like 80% ready, 70% ready. And we would get a customer to tell us what we need to change. Mm. Because you don't know what other people don't know, right? Everyone's boss is the CEO and the CEO's boss is the market. So you need to ship the damn product and then find out what people want, right? If the feedback is, we need to change the cameras, we need to improve it, then you just do that, mm. right? But people get caught in this virtuous loop and go around in circles, and that's when they get overwhelmed. And they think, I just released one episode, I'm not doing episode two. Whereas if you plan in like a in like a hundred episode work, yeah. work workflow, yeah. then you know, right, we're recording an episode, uh, we're recording episode on Monday, we want to get it on Thursday. Yes, it's not perfect, but ultimately no one cares. And ultimately we need to just get the thing out, right? So that you can show up elsewhere. And that's the main reason mm. why I'm able to grow all the time. Because so, just before you... Yeah, just please, before yeah, you sorry, sorry. The reason why is because we use the podcast as like an anchor and it's a central hub in the ecosystem. And if you use the podcast for your central point, then everything else just flows from it. Your short form, your long form, your text, your SEO, your newsletter, your website everything flows from it. You need to ship the damn thing. Mm. So if you get that out, it gives you all the time in the world. So let's just think about it. We only have seven days in a week. Yes. If we spend four days editing an episode, we have only three days to focus on all the other stuff. But if we just get the damn thing out in 24 hours, we make sure it's up to 90%. And then we spend six days pumping it out as much as possible. It is inevitable that you are going to grow because the unfortunate truth is that not everyone has 90 minutes to sit down and listen to a podcast, but we can catch what they want. Some guys want text, some girls want video, some guys want mm. long form, they want clips, mm. they want newsletters, they want carousels, they want graphics. We can just be everywhere all at once if we follow the model. But if you start interfering with the model and think i know better than the market which you don't then you're going to be screwed right okay. so there has to be some trust in whether you're doing it yourself or whether you're doing it with a company and you need to say like all right these guys know better than us and i'll just give you one example before i finish up on this point we're working with a new client at the moment and they're a very big hr client a hr company in the uk they have multiple podcasts and they're doing pretty well and i said and I, I made a very good promise to them i was like hey dude we can definitely grow the hell out of it we can make you a ton of money there's no doubt about that because I, I know that it's a good product got on a call yesterday this kickoff call and he said to me he was like i want nothing to do with it i want you to run it i want to stand off i want to get my time back and i was like that's the best way we're going to get results you step out of this we run it and then every Friday, I'll chime in and offer my help and I'll do a bit of a review and a bit of an analysis. You sit down with a coffee on a Saturday morning, you watch a two minute video and you will become a better person and we'll, become a better po we'll create a better podcast. Mm. So you need that fade in the process. It's yeah. like, just, uh, there's, just to finish up on this point, it's like, <laughs> please, please go ahead. so I've had a high performance coach for the past two years, right? And the guy is like my second brain. I don't, I don't look at my food, I don't count my food, I don't count my training, I show up, I know exactly what I need to do. In the beginning, if I tried to interfere with that process and say, oh, you know what, I don't like rice, or oh, I don't like sweet potato, da -da -da -da, I'm going to end up back in my same principle, same, the same situation I was in. Mm. But you're putting your fate and your trust in other people because they have all the time to be able to focus on that process. So for me to remove my time from that, I won't get my time back. But two, I let a specialist be the specialist. He just, mm -hmm. he just runs his own show. He does his thing, I do my thing. And I remember I listened to Mark Manson on Chris Williamson's podcast talk about uh, Will Smith and he wrote Will Smith's book called Will and uh, Mark Manson said to him you know you know you have all these people around your house like you have a cleaner you have a cook you have someone that takes care of like every, everything and he said I hire the best chef in the world so that he can do his duty and be the best chef in the world so I can be fulfill my duty and be the best possible actor that I can possibly be. Mm. But if I try to interfere with his work and I try to play become the chef, then it's a disservice to him and it's a disservice to people that like my work too. Mm. And that's it. So it sounds, it's very interesting how, um, it, like l listening to, listening to everything you've said, I think what it's like behind that, everything, what it's coming back to again is the importance of having like a structure and a plan yeah. and not just structure and a plan for like, um, you know, how an episode would be cut up and run and whatever, mm -hmm. but an more of a plan uh, of what is the show? Like, what is this 100%. podcast? Um, and that's the area where when I'm with clients, I'm like, guys, you're okay. I got 
to where I am just by doing my own thing. But this was a passion project, so it's a little bit different. If you're a business, mm -hmm. a, my advice to you is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be like, you're, you have to have a strategy because who, who, when, where, how, why? Oh, we need to answer these five questions. Who, mm -hmm. You know, that's, the, that's where we start. And then, you know, we go into the content and then that guest outreach and then the host training and then the platform side, you know, taking care of the technical stuff. But you know what's funny, uh, Darren, I don't know if you've had this experience. I've had conversations with clients and companies and they're like, oh, we want to start a podcast. I'm like, great, why? Mm. And it's just hmm. like silence. And they'll be like, oh, because, you know, everyone's doing a podcast now. And I'm like, yeah, like true. And I could, we could work together and I could charge you for it and we could launch your podcast for you. But if you don't know why you're doing it and what you're expecting as like an outcome of this, mm. I would be like, if you have like 50K, let's say marketing dollars to spend, okay, if you're not gonna be, like if you're not gonna apply it correctly, don't do it. You know, I would say put it in elsewhere. So, but what I've been realizing recently, I don't know if you've had this in your experience as well, is when I speak to clients, there's a, I feel like with podcasting, because it still is quite new in, yeah, uh, in, in general, um, maybe not in markets like the UK and the States, which are much more advanced than us, uh, but, and maybe in, in Bali and this part of the region for sure, is they don't know what, there's an education process that has to come with it. Sure. You know, it's not just, why do I, it's like, why do I need a podcast? So I'm going to play, let's do a role, let's do a little role play for the audience so that they, so all you clients can understand why. So hi, Darren, thank you for coming in today. Yeah, we were thinking about starting a podcast, but we, you know, we don't really, we're not really sure why or how, what, you know, why do you think we need a podcast? What's, what's that going to do for us? Got to reverse engineer it, right? So if you go back, I focus first on the content. Mm. So what do you do in your business, right? Let's say you run a sales automation SaaS company. Great. Right? Like Lempire. Lempire, we're starting a podcast. Okay, we're doing this in a way to, what's the goal? Traffic. They want traffic to their business and revenue. So they'll want to increase the revenue so people buy their software, but they also want to increase the traffic. So without traffic, you can't increase revenue. And without good content, you can't get the traffic, right? So it's, yes. like, a, it's like a nuanced approach. And because of that, we can't go talking about relationships, controversial stuff, stuff that people uh, use to basically grow uh, creator podcasts. Like clickbait kind yeah, of stuff. We can't yeah. go down yeah, that yeah, path yeah. because sure. we're trying to improve the brand equity and we're trying to improve generally the yeah the brand equity basically like how we're positioned in, in the world so then it has to go back to okay let's go into the content pillars so how i describe this it's like a tree structure it's a podcast on top so let's say it's a sales automation podcast within there what do we have we'll have some how-to guides so how to run a campaign how to do how to set it up on these tools all the benefits of it then we'll also have some personal experiences. So the host is not a robot. This is the whole thing of podcasting. It's not about robotic education. We look at a white paper if we want education. Absolutely, yeah. So you want to be able to share your deep personal insights. So the reason why I'm saying this is because I know a lot of these sales automation platforms and the ones that crush it give that insight into their own background. So let's mm. say you're a founder and you had all these issues with sales when you were younger, so on and so forth. You're bringing through those philosophies and you're bringing through that your experiences because... Sharing your advice is cheap. If I tell you to do something, it's cheap. But if I tell you my experience, being like, hey, I spent the last four years doing this, it could be valuable for you. You can't mess with someone's experiences. So if you share just experiences, your life is going to be 10 times better. And from there, then, you're basically building authority and influence. And the two biggest ways to, to move the world is, is being influential. Some of the biggest leaders, some of the biggest conquerors in the past we're all influential mm -hmm. figures. Absolutely. And yeah. it comes through that path of walking through that philosophy of how do I build authority? How do I build influence? And using a podcast for your central hub in the ecosystem yeah. will build that piece of content. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last point that there is then the tactical stuff. So if you are running a podcast and it's becoming something that's like monotonous, you really do want to be helping people because I don't know how you consume content, but if it's purely educational, it's kind of a bit dry. If it's purely entertaining, it's like Kim Kardashian. We don't want to hear it, right? Yeah, you got to... F <laughs> there's a Venn diagram. So in the yeah. middle of the Venn diagram, right? Yeah. There's education, entertainment. Mm -hmm. You need to toe that line. So we work with some B2B brands and some of them are boring as hell. And we just come in and we just, we humanize it. We find out more about their story, about their journey, what made them get to where they are, their struggles, their wins, their losses. And walking through that philosophy is a, is a really nice thing, right? Because course, yeah. that will allow them to do this for the long term. So if you don't know what you're doing, 
you can basically chart this out. So if I know in this content system that we have the stories, the journeys, all that kind of stuff, and it feeds into the product and service that they sell, mm -hmm. we can open up an Excel spreadsheet and chart out 100 episodes. We could literally do 100 episodes because we could say, these are our content pillars, this is what we know, and this is how we're going to fit this into it. That is quite literally a four-year strategy planned in 20 minutes because we know exactly as it is and the funny part about this too is like as you do an episode something else will open you'll realize you got more right <laughs> but i think people go into it we go back to the beginning why they feel overwhelmed and 90 percent of podcasts don't get to episode three and of the 10 percent that are left 90 percent don't get to 20. that's in i've i've heard this statistic before darren but that like that's fucking crazy because because it's such a, um, if you told me like after 20 or yeah. 30, I'd be like, ah, okay, you know, fair enough. They, they gave it a good shot. But like three, you haven't even, three, is, three, you haven't even like taken your first steps yet. Like it's nothing. But the reason why you go back to the, the whole idea, right? Is because no plan, you'll be assigned a plan, no objective, you'll miss your objective, no goals, you will never hit a goal. And when you come to something like a podcast, there's so much work that's involved to just get the thing out. And then on top of that, because of the nature of the content, it's multifactorial, there's lots of variables, there's audio, who gives a shit about audio, all this kind of stuff. The engagement is just generally going to be lower, right? Mm, yeah. so, they, so people will go see a smaller number on the screen. Now we'll get into the value of the numbers in a minute, but they'll see a smaller number on the screen. And because they see a small number, they'll open up Instagram and see some dude getting 50,000 likes and some chick getting 20,000 likes and think, oh, that's the baseline of content. If I post on Instagram, I'll get all these views, but they don't realize that the, what's happening in a podcast it's harder to get retention harder to get engagement now the difference in this is likes are cheap listens are valuable mm -hmm. so how you build trust absolutely right? yeah so anyone can put up something and just get a few likes but to build real genuine trust it's that embedded nature and the reason for that is because generally for someone to buy from you they need to consume around seven hours of content mm -hmm. to become an influential uh, character that can be seven podcasts or it can be 50,000 posts that you, that you build over the course of yeah. five years. Right? Yeah. So if you need to build all that trust through a few photos, all those years, you can bring that down by building really good content. Mm. And as long as we're not talking about absolute trash, we're able to bring that through a lot easier. Right. Yeah. And I think it goes back to the philosophy that, you know, the long-term thinking mm. and baking that into your entire philosophy. And I'm fully aware that people, have financial restrictions and capital goals and milestones to hit. So therefore maybe you should be doing something else with your time, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't do, if you can't see something out for a year, then you shouldn't be doing it in general. I'll give you an example, personal example. So I'm a background in bodybuilding, uh, run a lot of marathons too and stuff like this. And I wanted to go into ultras and I was thinking like, right, I want to run these, you know, hundred K, 200 K races. And then I was thinking, why do I want to do that? And also, what's the cost of doing it? What's the anti-goal? So if I ran 100K, my business would fall apart and I'd miss everything. So I thought, it's probably just not a good idea because I can't see me doing it for a year. So why am I doing it for a week? And that's a good way to view things, right? And I, thankfully, you can say no to stuff. Yeah. That's the end of it then. Yeah, true. And there's, um, <laughs> it's so interesting listening to someone in the same field as me to and get your perspective on things and how you analyze things, even like your, the, the client issues that, yeah, that you have, I can relate to, you know, a lot of those. Um, and you know what's, so I think one thing you said earlier is very important, which is you want to have a plan and a structure, and this is how it's going to run. And your goal is to, you know, tweak it as you go, you know? And one thing you said that I think even for me is uh, a good reminder is fucking just ship the thing. I'm going to remember that, like, just ship it. Because there's times, even for, like, our recording today, I'm like, ah, uh, the lights aren't the way I want or whatever. And uh, but I have my sign now, and I want it to be a certain way. And that's kind of putting me off. But I was like, I need, I'm like, Darren's in town. There's no, I'm just going to do it. And, like, fuck it. But you see, that's, that's where I think that's where I've been. I think I've been a, the biggest hindrance to myself in the sense of, uh, and I tell people this all the time. I'm like, guys. I thought the way to grow is do podcast, do my podcast, be consistent, good guests, good questions, show up. That's it. There's a whole arm of 
what, what you're talking about, and it's the second phase that I have lacked in, which is the redistribution yeah, the and the promotion and the market. Like the lack of marketing, I think, is one of the key areas or that I've that have hindered my podcast mm. and what I'm trying to put a lot more effort into into now. But again, like you said, it needs you need um, for your for your podcast. Do you do everything? Do you have a team that like helps you edit and like do all this kind of stuff? Or what? What's well, the? We have a team on their Vox, right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So by the way, tell us about. We never even got into. Um, well, how did you get into podcasting? Tell us about Voix, what you guys do. What's Darren's I'll podcasting story? that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So when I started, just on the team side of where it's kind of scale, let's give it a little bit of overview. So kickoff session started in like 2020. I basically just wanted a way out of my like career and like finance and everything. And I used it as a hub to network with people. And at the time, I still wanted to be CEO of Goldman Sachs. So I was in a career space. It was a careers podcast. But as time went on, one thing became apparent was that I can't do everything myself. So I had a small team from the very beginning. I had a designer and then I had an editor, right? But again, the battle is won and lost in redistribution. But I knew that that was like the structure. And as time went on, the more exposure I had to other people, I knew that basically this online space was like blowing up, a lot of opportunity there when you have that skill. So I was honing the craft of the back end operations of a podcast and I was really nailing it. And when mm. I was interviewing people, they would just be like, yeah, this was a great experience. Like we really enjoyed it. They'd see this content come out afterwards. They're like, whoa, that's brilliant. It looks really good, right? It's really put, well put together. So at that point, people were like, will you come do it for us? So I was getting involved with all these like small entrepreneurs and I was doing a lot of freelance stuff at the time, which was just more consulting. So what would happen was I would get on these calls, I'd walk through this philosophy and then I'd come back to two weeks later and nothing was done. And I was still getting paid, but I was pissed off because I'm like, hey, dude, like we said we'd do this and you didn't do it. Mm. And now that's where we're at and it's pissing me off. And now you got to go do it. So that's when I kind of went into this agency model where I was like, you know what? I'll just do it. So I was like, you pay me a bit more and we'll do the designs. We'll do the editing and we'll see how this goes. And as, of what, as of that went on, I realized that a lot of people were falling down these cracks and they just even though they didn't have the skill, they didn't have the time, they didn't have the patience to go do it themselves. So we kind of flirted with that for a while. I had a lot of free clients in the beginning and I was building my own podcast. And what I would basically do is I'd have me as the key case study. I would just run a lot of shit through my own podcast and be like, hey, this clearly works because one, we're here talking today and you wanted to meet me as a result. So it's obviously worked from that perspective. It's not necessarily anecdotal because we're using it as a proxy for so much other shows. Sure, they're sure. all working. And a lot of people that were in my network, especially at the time, they were using a lot of my principles in their own podcast and it was working really well. And then when we started doing our newsletter and so on, I had hundreds of people that would follow the process. I would literally tell people to do something like this and they would get back to me a week later and say, hey, it worked. So that feedback loop was really positive. And then I knew then at that point, we had this really functioning machine that could go into the B2B space or B2C yeah, space. Yeah. So we started working with some creators in the beginning and we were running their show on the back end. So I would run the production, we'd run the editing, the design, and basically just started scaling that up. Inevitably ended up in the B2B space because basically they were, they wanted to be more embedded in the long-term view, which was yes, important. Yes, yes, And they also understood the process of like, we were like a vendor and a partner so they could basically trust us. So we basically just scaled up as a result under the, the hood of OX, which basically was us running multiple B2B shows. So now we have about 20 clients. They're all based in the US. Some are based in the UAE. There's a few different places around. And we're doing a lot of that execution production side of stuff. Now, that's good. We make sure to hit the requir requirements. They're not going to join the podcast graveyard, so on and so forth. We run that show and it runs really effectively. But where the real value comes in and not discrediting the team is in the strategy side of stuff. Yes, story. absolutely. So that's when I'm coming in being yeah. like, hey, we did this thing. Here are the numbers. But to get to the next stage, we need to change X, Y, and Z. Mm. So we'll walk through that philosophy, right? Gotcha, so yeah. we're becoming more embedded with them as like a partner. And the beauty of that then is the fact that we're able to produce better content, it grows more, and it's a constant flywheel. Mm -hmm. So the more that we educate you and the more that you take the feedback on board, the better the episodes become, the better they look, the better, it's, it's just constant going around and around and around. And we've had some great clients like that as well. Like we work with a big um, multifamily real estate 
uh, company in the US, very, very big company. And the guys were super genuine, like really good, really good guys. And they, they really wanted to learn. So they were changing the cameras, they were changing the conversations. We get on a call once a month and they want to learn, right? So the yeah. people that want to learn get the best results, just generally, right? And then obviously then it kind of scales up from there. But that's kind of where we got to today. So our team now, we have a bunch of, we have a full team of editors, full team of designers, full team of operations managers, and we just basically run a ton of shows, you know, globally. And that's the beauty of it, right? That's, yeah, how, that's how it kind of works. But yeah. again, you fall first, you crawl, you walk, and then you <laughs> yeah. run, right? So it's interesting. Um, you, uh, you, the approach that you, and this is why, this is one of the questions I wanted to ask you. So, I mean, you do the same thing, but we have different approaches mm. in the sense that you, because I've thought about this uh, and I'm realizing with time because, uh, and kind of like how you started, you started off as a consultant. You know, you'd come into the project, you'd help them launch the podcast, help them, yeah. you know, how to improve and so on. And then as time went on, you had, the, you had the editors and designers already in place for your own show. So you just like amplified, you know, on, mm. on, on what you had already. My thing is, uh, and now as a result, you built like a company that like you run and you have people and you have employees and you have salaries and you have like this whole mm. thing. So that is something that I've always wanted to be an, uh, an entrepreneur, but I think I've realized more recently, I like being a solopreneur. I like okay. the, the, the freedom of doing that. However, what I think is if, if you're coming to me, if we're looking at like a, a, a package for like a potential client, if I'm going as, okay, I'm Khaled and this is what I can do for you. And you come in with like you and like your team and stuff. You have a much stronger offering than what I do. So my mm -hmm. question is, do you think you would still have reached where to like, where I guess where you are right now without investing and in building like a team and everything that, for that? That's a fucking great question. And I'll, and I'll tell you the harsh truth, right? Is the fact that everything works, right? So what I was doing was like coaching, right? Yeah, sure. Because I think I've thought about this and I'll give you an example on this too. If you run, let's say a thousand dollars learning platform slash coaching, okay, right, and then you had twenty clients, it's twenty k a month. Well, let's say it's twenty k for that, but then you did some back end personalized one to one coaching that was a two and a half k a month, and fifty percent or twenty percent of those people ended up buying that. Well, now you have this no fulfillment business that is courses oriented, and then you'll get some high ticket relatively high ticket people who are going to do one-to-one -one coaching. So you end up having a very, very strong, solid business that's kind of frictionless. No team, so on and so forth, right? Okay. That's just one way to slice and dice it. Remember, there's thousands of ways to get rich, only a handful of ways to, to go broke. On the other side, you have what we do, which is like we take more ownership and more responsibility. Yes. It's higher ticket. We'll start at like 5K a month and we'll do 12-month contracts. So we're generally doing around 60K per client. But at the same time, we have this, this constraint, there's pros and cons. It's more reliable because you have more clients or more consistent revenue, but at the same time, you have to actually fulfill on what you need to do. So it's, mm. it's harder to scale, but it's yeah. always a balance, right? Technically, your coaching business can bring in a million people, but that's very tough to scale yes. in terms of like getting the people. Yes. Technically, we could also make millions of dollars a month, but we just need better processes, mm. automation, systems, mm -hmm. you have to do that. Mm -hmm. So everything works, but it all goes back to the individual because where your business is, is a reflection of where you were personally in your own journey, right? Because in the email that he writes about, your business, your business is a reflection of you. So if you're super unorganized, your business is super unorganized. And that means if you have SaaS, coaching, agency, media company, it's, it's a reflection of who you are. Mm. Now, some models scale better, Uber obviously made a ton of money with their cars, right? <laughs> yeah. Facebook did great with that stuff too, right? Sure. But there's pros and cons to everything. It's just the fact that you got to understand what it is you want to do. Now, bringing it back to just my personal experience, mm. I have always been a team builder slash like leader in that individual. And I'll give you an example. When I was like 21, 22 in consulting, I ran million dollar projects for consulting firms and I didn't do a tap of work. I was 22 years old managing 15 people. I wasn't the executor, I was the assembly of the people. And mm. I, I, I believe that as an entrepreneur, one of your main roles is to be able to assemble teams and get them to Absolutely. be productive, right? Absolutely. So for me, I've always been able to understand what makes people thick, tick and also being able to get 
the most out of people, right? Mm, mm. So that was in when I was in consulting, when I was in finance, same shit. I was 24, 25, I was running 20 engineers. I was trying, these engineers were like 40 years old and I was trying to get the most out of them and get them to be reproductive. So then when I built my business, I wasn't the editor, I wasn't the designer, I wasn't operations manager. I hired for those roles yeah. because I knew what I was, what was involved in podcasting. It was easy to systematize. Yeah. So let me give you an example. We have a thumbnail. We know the thumbnails work in four or five different variations. I can just draw up a process and hand it to a designer who then can learn it. And the funny thing is, our main designer was not even in YouTube before we actually met him. Really? I, I, oh, wow. I taught okay. him YouTube. He was a graphic designer. Okay. And he was a really good designer, but he did like, he did like ads mm -hmm. and stuff like this that I just taught him YouTube. And then I put him down that wormhole and like now he's an excellent designer because again, it's the, it's the entrepreneur's job to be able to assemble teams, right? Yeah. And that's where, that's where my strengths lie. And even mm -hmm. like now the next phase, like I, so I would say that I have an enterprise mindset in a startup. I'm trying to build an enterprise up from the ground up business, yeah. Yeah, yeah. systems, process and team. And I think one of my strengths is being able to understand the heartbeat of like where our team is and be able to fill gaps appropriately. So a lot of my days right now are based on systems. I open up, um, you know, Lucid Chair, you know, design tools. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, if you saw my laptop, I'm like moving boxes because <laughs> I'm trying to understand like the blueprint of the company yeah. and systematize that and hire for where we need to. Because I think that's my highest form of leverage. And of course, then we can use capital, code, and sure. all this kind of stuff to improve the process. Yeah. But that's, it's just one way to do it, right? Yeah, and yeah. there's different ways to, to win. But at the end of the day, it's, it's down on the individual, right? And for where sure. you were in your own journey. Yeah. And I guess that's, you know, for you and your kids, that's the way you chose. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, knock on wood, seems to have worked out. You know, it seems to be working out very well, man. So I hope, I really do hope it, it, it continues for you like that. It was very interesting. I've never heard someone say um, where you are, where your business is right now is a reflection of where you are right now. Man. And that for me, I was like thinking like in my head when they're saying that, I'm like, fuck, there's so much work to do. <laughs> but, but it, and it, so entrepreneurship. In a, in a great way. But of like, course, yeah, right? Yeah, but like, yeah. At the end of the day, entrepreneurship <laughs> is a journey of self-discovery disguised in a path for profitability. That's what it always goes down to, right? It's, Ooh, it's, an, internal, that. it's an internal awesome. journey, right? Mm -hmm. It's always an internal journey mm -hmm. and it's doing the inner, inner work allows you to be someone that can make more money. If you're making 800K a month, you are not someone that can make a, 1 million a year. You're not yet, right? 1 million a month. You are someone that's making that much money at that time. And that's just where you are. And it's, uh, it's brutal, it's true, it's the reality, right? Because the real world is absolutely brutal. If you work for a company, you could be given a salary that's not necessarily a representation of where you currently are. It could be environmental. But again, the CEO's boss is the market. The market will determine who you are and where you're at. Yeah. And that, that's not a personal thing. It's just reality. It's, yeah. it's, it's fluid. Yeah. It doesn't have a personality. Mm. And knowing that, and knowing where you are, you can get stuck or you have a lot of opportunities. So in our business, we had been stuck a lot of times and we've been caught at different points. And why we weren't growing was, was really because of me, because I wasn't an individual that determined to be able to grow more. So I had to either invest in mentors, spend more time learning, reading more books, having more reflection, looking at numbers, looking at data, because I wasn't an individual that could make more money. Mm. And that's exactly where people are, right? Yeah. And especially in the new era of businesses, which is the one person, small team business, whereby it's not VC backed. You didn't get a loan from Bank of Daddy, from your VC and your rich private equity uncle. So you didn't get a different starting point. You, it is basically a reflection of where you were at. Yeah. So for us, and it's a grand, it's a, it's a beautiful point that I know that, you know, to get to the next stage, I, I probably need to invest in people. And I've actually been speaking to people here mm. who could potentially be advisors on a company that are not cheap, right? I'm pretty sure the dude is like 9K a month. Mm. But I need to, sometimes you need to spend the money to be able to get to the next level. You, right? you just do. And you it's, do. it's not about spending the money on the Rolex or the Lambo, right? Exactly. It's an investment in yourself. In yourself. And yeah. when I was actually, it's a funny story. <laughs> I was filling out the contact form for this particular individual. And, at the, and I'd filled out the whole hotel thing. And I was kind of nervous and a little bit anxious doing it. And at the very bottom, it was like, you know, this person's fee is not cheap. And are you the type of person who's willing to invest in themselves, their business, and their own growth? And I was like, fuck yeah, I am. Like, yeah. I want to be able to, be, I want to be that person, right? Yeah. I don't want to be that person who in two years' time is like stuck moving sideways. And then 
you know, it's 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 clear that I didn't make the investment in myself. Yeah. And man, like if you if you if you can't believe in yourself, if you can't invest in yourself, then why should anyone else invest in you? Why should a business partner invest in you? Brief. Why should a client? Why should a customer? Why should your partner invest in you? Why should anyone believe in you if you don't believe deep down that you can actually do it? Mm, right? Absolutely. It has to. It has to come from internal. And of course, there's imposter syndrome, and of course, there's doubt and self doubt. But if you don't have that viewpoint that fundamentally you can get to that point, then no one else should be able to show. No one else should invest in you. Yeah. That's you know what that's. Uh there's so many things about what you said that I really appreciate because there's experiences that you've had that I think about, like, for example, uh, with your business and how you were saying now, like there's some tough times, you know, sometimes things are going great. Sometimes things are not. But when I hear stories like that, I'm like the value that Darren is getting from those lessons oh. is fucking Runner. priceless. But and. The only way to get that is to do to build and go man. through this a similar experience that he is going because what he's learning, I'm jealous of what you've learned. But man, do you know what I'm saying? You know that feeling? Of course, right? So at the end of the day, the wisdom comes from the pain. Yes, absolutely. The more pain you put yourself through, the more wise you are as an individual. Yeah. The most wise people in, in the world have the gray hair or no hair, right? Because they've gone through the pain. Well, yeah, I, I lost the hair, but when, don't when worry, I there, yeah. we'll get it back. <laughs> I'm a huge treatment for you to get that back, right? But fundamentally, the pain comes from the wisdom. And a lot of the time, you need to get get hit in the face every single day and wake up and feel the pain to go through it to be able to understand where you're at and this is why you know i resonate so much with you right like i yeah as in, i'm just someone that's so geared this way that i feel very uncomfortable to be around people that are not geared this way sometimes because they don't understand the pain right and we've gone through a lot of stuff like this people individuals sales prospects and you just need to go through it several times, right? You need you need a prospect to say he was going to sign and then not sign. <laughs> yeah. You know, you need a client to pull out on Christmas Eve. You need this stuff to go through for you to be able to become a better man, a better individual, Absolutely. And a better person, a better entrepreneur, right? 100%. And every time you go around, if you do that reflection, and the reflection doesn't have to be like, you know, journaling. It can just be that internal dialogue that we improve. Yeah. You become a better person. I'll tell you a really interesting story of this. I had a, I had a client that like basically like ghosted and they ghosted with like 20k of an invoice due and i remember i was with my girlfriend i was with my par- i was with my partner and i was with my partner's mom and it was like friday night like 11 o'clock and i found out that this person i ghosted left the chat and didn't pay the 20k and i was like gutted i was like so like upset it was like proper like fear and scarcity and i was like what am i going to do it was like a lot of money and i just didn't know what i was going to do and then about a couple of months later, I'd worked through that and a similar scenario <laughs> happened with someone with a much smaller fee, but it was for a different reason. And I just didn't even give a shit. I was just like, who gives a fuck? I was like, what matters is the next five actions, which was opening up LinkedIn Sales yeah. Navigator, getting on a sales call, yeah. walking through, and through their process, signing a new client, improving my existing clients, improving my results. That's what mattered. Fuck the money. The yeah, money didn't yeah. even matter at the end Ab- of the day. You absolutely. know what I mean? It yeah, didn't yeah, even yeah. matter. It was that experience and it was that in, inward reflection and being like all right just keep on going and like that's basically what it is because like entrepreneurship is basically just banging your head off the wall for as long as possible until you don't feel the pain anymore and you just keep on going and that's yeah. it right you look at the best entrepreneurs they just everything it's like water for duck back it just flows off them yeah you know and i and i do think it's a good benchmark for everything else in life right yeah like i'm I, like i love my parents and they're coming out to visit me pretty soon and they get kind of stressed sometimes you know they get stressed of like this and Stress to book and flights and da da da. A lot of the, a lot of my kind of like calmness. You know, we can't interact beforehand before I kind of get hot and heavy. <laughs> it just comes from being in the fire a lot of the time. That I feel a lot of the other stuff is not uh, a problem. Yeah. And I often feel this with my partner too. You know, like I just look at things from a very logical point of view. Uh, yes. And yeah. try look at it from a non-emotional point of view. But I feel like it's tough sometimes to do that, right? And to be honest, I should look at it from more of an emotional point of view sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, just, you just brought up, you know, my, my, my biggest internal dilemma because I'm very, like, listening to you speak, I'm like, oh, he analyzes situations and thinks of, like, things sequentially kind of like how I do. And sometimes what, one of the areas that I struggle, and I think you would resonate with this, is I can... I am very logical, so I've done all the, you know, the overview analysis, you know, I've done the whole SWOT. So I've looked at that, you know, their side, my side, everything that's gone on. And now I have like my, 
conclusion. So I can feel, I can be aware of both sides, but emotionally I'm attached to like one side. Mm. Let's say, for example, I'm really upset, and, but I can logically be like, okay, this is why I'm upset. I understand the person didn't probably mean whatever, blah, blah. I can logically take myself through that like step. However, what I learned in therapy mm. is um, like with this, in this example is, she told me that Khaled, you're trying to fight logic with emotion and emotion with logic. And you can't. Mm. They don't, they, this can't solve this and this can't solve that. So building on what you said, sometimes you need to bring in the emotional side to deal with that emotional trauma or that emotional challenge that you're facing before you can bring it back into logic. That's why therapy is amazing. And that's why I spent a lot of time in therapy as well, deliberately for this. And you know, for anyone listening, especially a man, you don't, if you go to therapy, you don't go to therapy because you have a problem. You go there because you want to be a better person. And it made me a better person. Absolutely. 100%, right? same, me, same here, man. One thing that I've noticed, especially interacting with my partner, and you know, I feel like that a lot of time women can be kind of different than men in that regard because it can be quite emotional, but it's understanding their particular needs right at that point. So for me, I can be very logical. So if something happens, I can often say to my partner, and I often do, do you want the logical response or the emotional response? Yeah, I, <laughs> and she will always say the emotional response. Yeah. Always. She just wants uh, like, you know, comfort, and I'm happy to be the person to give comfort. Yeah. However, however, my mate recently he had a bit of a run-in with the business, and things weren't going his way. And I was in a restaurant with him. We were in Singapore, and I was like, dude, it fucking sucks. But I'm telling you what you got to do, and this, here's what you got to do. Here's a logical response. I'm like, I can be there for you emotionally, but you don't need that. You need to get back to your laptop and do the fucking work. And here's your next five steps. Mm. Checked in me a week ago. He goes, yes, I'm a new client. We're on, we're on the pad again. And I was like, dude, you need to feed that individual what they need, right? And a lot of exactly, time for exactly. dudes, especially, I, I can give you the sympathy, but unfortunately, the sympathy won't increase your bank account. The logic will, right? And I can tell... I can generally tell someone speaking to someone like where they're kind of at, maybe their journey, their mm-hmm. business, whatever. And a lot of the time, your answers can be resolved by doing a bit more work. And I, I met a guy yesterday. I won't mention his name for for a bit of sure, sure. confidentiality. Yeah, but of course. He spoke to me about it and he was like, and the guy's making around 800K a month. And he was saying that, you know, if you really look at people and you really look at where they're at, they're just probably not trying hard enough. And... They'll come to you and they'll say, I only closed one deal this month. It's like, okay, how many sales calls did you have? Three. Three in a month? That's a fucking morning. Mm-hmm. That, that's a slow morning. Mm-hmm. If you just did more volume, you'd get the result that you wanted. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, I'm not losing the weight. Or I'm not putting on muscle. How many times do you go to the gym? Twice. How much do you eat? I don't track my macros. If you just, if you just measured it, yeah. and if you just worked harder, you're going to get that result. Yeah. Different stage for different people. Sure, course, sure, right? sure. But, when you have identified, and it sounds like you have a vehicle, a winning vehicle, it's not about what's over here. It's about looking at that vehicle and going as hard as possible. Yeah. Focus is everything. Focus is the only thing that you can control in this world. You can't yeah. control the market, you can't control the government, you can't control the Fed, Fed, but you can control your focus and your idea. And once you have some sort of fit with a product, I truly believe that you can get it to any sort of numbers with enough focus. Mm. So it's not about what's happening over here or what someone's doing on Instagram or someone else's podcast. It's the same with ours, right? Yeah. I look at, I look at my podcast and I, I genuinely, genuinely believe that we can positively impact 10 million people to live a richer, more fulfilling life. Timeline, not too sure on that yet. But I think 10 million people, we can have impact them to have a better and basically a richer, more fulfilling life. And the reason why is because we solved the problem for one individual, which was me, and then many people along the way. And, you know, a lot of people aren't that unique, right? We have similar problems. <laughs> so that's how you, know, you can scale it, right? Yeah. One thing, I'm so happy you just brought up this point. Um, so your podcast is about helping younger people uh, live um, uh, richer, more fulfilling lives. That's, mm-hmm. that's what your podcast is about. My podcast is called, uh, guys, just for the reference, his podcast is called Kickoff Sessions. If you haven't, check it out. It's fun. some great stuff there. So from my podcast, for example, Hope It Helps. So the whole idea behind my podcast is I want to help people. Mm. And I don't care about how I help you. Mm. And I'm a person that I've, because I've gotten feedback before, like, you know, maybe your podcast should be, maybe it should be a bit more niche, a bit more <laughs> whatever. And I'm like, honestly, it's the variety is the reason I love it. 
because I'm I'm a person I just want to fucking learn. I don't care. You, I had wa- a wa- water waste management guy on my podcast. Nice. Why the fuck do I give a fuck about that? But in the when I'm sitting and talking to you, I'm like I'm like looking at you with like these eyes, like bro, just teach me, teach me. I want to learn. What do you, what do you know that like I don't know? And I don't care what it's about. So. My, with my podcast, for example, <clears throat> my hope is, let's say you, Dan, you're like, you're, you're, in, you're a water expert. You're like, oh, Khaled did a water treatment podcast. Let's check it out. I'll check it out. And if you walked away from that a little bit better than when you started it, doesn't matter in what way, to what extent. Mm. For me, I feel like I've done my job. Um, so my podcast is a selfish, selfless journey. You know, uh-huh. selfishly, I'm selfishly learning, but hopefully along the way, if you've been, you know, you've come along with me for the ride, I hope you've like learned something. Now, long when the answer to get to this question. Now, my podcast, your podcast, the podcast that we watch, all the big ones. A lot of them, I think in our space have, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to give back. We're trying to help people, right? And a lot of times clients will come to you or pop people who want to start podcasts and be like, oh, but there's already a lot of podcasts about real estate. There's already a lot of podcasts about this. I'm like, yes, but that doesn't mean... But just because there's a lot of it doesn't mean there's no space for you. However, when it comes to, if we're analyzing like our shows, what is it about it? Because we would interview, me and you would probably speak to similar guests because we have similar interests. We would want to find out similar things about, you know, these kind of guests. So the question then becomes when, if I'm coming to you as a potential client or I want to start my podcast, I'm like, Darren, I want to get into this space, but how do I stand out in that space? Hmm. Great question. It's how you become a category of one. One of the best books I ever read is called Category of One. And it's all about, at the end of the day, everything is a commodity. Your phone, your watch, your ring, your headphones, it's all a commodity. It's all the same. Everything is the exact same. Our baseline is so high these days as a consumer that everything is exact same. Last time you were in a, last time you were in a hotel, you probably expected there to be water in the room. Hot towels, soft towels, good mattress. The baseline is just c- continuously increasing and increasing. So that is the commodity level. So now when we listen to a podcast, mine's an online business podcast, we expect to learn more about how to improve our business, how to make more money, all this kind of stuff. That is the baseline. Everything else you do becomes a category of one. The experience you have for people, mm-hmm. how you interact with them, mm-hmm. how you connect emotionally with people, yep. that is the entire experience. So similar to branding, when you're interacting with someone, Again, it's kind of cliche, but people remember how you make them feel versus what you basically tell them, right? So at the very, very least, when you're beginning a podcast, let's say it's a real estate podcast, and we actually have a bunch of real estate clients in our portfolio, that they just need to give the good information, the interest rates, all this kind of (laughs) shit. It's your job to be ahead of that, Yeah. but then it's the experience that will actually elevate where you are. Mm. So the best distinguisher is always going to be on production value. So how it's presented, how it sounds, how it looks, how it feels, how we write copy, how we interact with people, and how we basically kind of give back. So that true continuum puts you in a category of one. And I'll just give you like an anecdotal experience. So there's a bunch of, you know, online business podcasts, but I guarantee you when the chips all land and all the chess pieces are put in the next couple of years, there'll be everyone, not everyone, but when people think of like, kickoff sessions they'll remember that gold mm. and the black yes they'll remember yes, the way exactly, i yes. dress i only dress in like all black all the time and that's like the, the vibe and the feel and it's that basic experience we have that when people sit down to a kickoff sessions podcast they know they're getting that vibe and feel right yeah and that's what puts you in a category of one because again they could listen to a bunch of other shows but it's all kind of like it's just the basic shit right and i think i re- recorded recently with luke belmar and i we had like a thousand comments and I read every single comment. And the main differentiator that I had as a feedback, and this isn't a hit on other people, was that other people who interviewed him were asking baseline questions. They were like, oh, like, you know, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? Or how do I start drop shipping? Whereas what I just did was I started a conversation, I had an anchor, and I started the conversation. And I let him speak. And as he spoke, I listened to what he said. And then I questioned what he said because I genuinely wanted to know more about that idea. And we did that process for two hours. And at the very end of it, we got a lot of great different topics in, but I just pressed them in here. And that's what all the comments were about, that this was the first ever podcast that Luke Bellmer ever recorded, that someone asked genuine questions to ask genuine answers. Mm. And that's how I'll become a category of one, is by doing that, and that's how I'll interview some of the best guests in the world over the next decade. Is because when I sit down with people, 
like like I like I actually want to ask you questions during this podcast because I genuinely want to know the answer. And so many people are overlooking that. So as I say, right, communication is becoming one of the biggest lost arts, and it's the last true form of interaction is communication, mm, right? Mm, and I love this that. podcast now, and these podcasts are one of the last ways we're going to preserve personalization because everything is automated, everything's outsourced, and everything's behind a screen. And you can tell this in society because people don't listen. They talk at you, not with you. They, they don't interact with people. So if you can be someone who can just genuinely listen and follow curiosity like you're doing, which I love so much, Sahil Bloom talks about that a lot too, is that he was like, fuck being this pigeonhole person in his box. I just want to follow my curiosity and look at him now. And if you can genuinely do that in your podcast, in your content, and just genuinely be part of the ride, you're going to get everything that you want from yeah. it. You know? And at the end of the day, all the stuff that you want is just a byproduct of producing value, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think something I've picked up in um, this word just keeps has been coming up in my head throughout our conversation when we talked about the entrepreneurship side, when we're talking about our podcast, when we're talking about personalization. The word that kept coming up is it, it keeps you honest. Mm. Honest about not just, you know, what you're putting out, but like honest with yourself, you know, because if you're, I think... I tell people, um, I met, uh, so one of the guys we had on the uh, AED podcast was the ex-CEO of uh, My, My Dubai, like a water company, one of the big water companies here. So we met up the other day for coffee and so on. And it was so interesting how, because he told me that Khaled, when I'm doing my second level of like C-level interviews, uh, I always bring them to a coffee shop. Because I'm like, I'm like, interesting, like why? He's like, because that's how I'm going to see like, who you actually are. He's like, you can pretend to be a certain person, give me a certain image in like an interview. And he's like, the fr after the first five minutes of the interview, the next 45 are just reaffirming what you believed or your impression the first five. Even he's like, I came, I saw you, you were early. You had, you know, you ordered your coffee, showed you took initiative, you didn't wait. And all these little things and coming, like building on what you're talking about when it comes to like communication, it really is a lost art. I... I, lo I just love talking to people. You know, me doing what we're doing, this is my dream. Mm. I'm right now in the moment, in this moment, living my dream. I'm sitting down with a person and having a fucking fantastic conversation. And I'm so in, you know, that I, it's like a natural high that I get when I finish like a good recording. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be a bit, uh, excuse the audience, I'm going to get Darren's advice and be a bit selfish here on mine. So... I'll give you the full story. So I've been running my podcast now for the last, uh, since 2020, right? Awesome. The first year was, uh, it was a weekly podcast, did it 52 weeks in a row, insane, great. And then for the last two, two and a half years, it's, I've been producing content, but it's been inconsistent. There's been a lot of inconsistencies around. Now it's kind of seems a bit more settled. My question is, I, because I, I'm very logical like you, I'm like, okay, what am I, have I done this enough Am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? I'm like, I don't think it's the guests that are like my hindrance. It's not the guests. I don't think it's the content. I don't think it's the, uh, maybe the production value could definitely be improved and more consistent. But I'm kind of at a stage, I'm like, what is, I will keep doing this regardless because I, this is just something genuinely I love to do. And the benefits that you get from it are, I could have a podcast about podcasting, just about the benefits of doing one. I know you've had a similar experience. So what advice would you have to, I guess, someone like me who has done 100 episodes, gotten to this point, and now I'm like, okay, how do I just take this to the, like, to the next level? Because I don't know, if, is it one thing or do I just keep doing and thinking, but I like learning from people and mm -hmm. if anyone has good, if you, you're in the similar space and you've done it successfully, so any feedback, I'm always trying to improve, you know, as welcome. So just like um, at a zoom out stage, there's always only three different variables. So there's the content, there's the production value, and there's distribution. So if you were putting out a ton of content, like a ton of content, and it wasn't growing, then it's going to be production value or the content. But if you haven't been concise or consistent with repurposing and the volume, mm. then that's the next step. For you, or for everyone, I basically look at all three buckets, because the content has to solve specific problems. Not specific problems, but has to solve problems. So we're having this conversation today, it's helping people, it's working in the content space or wanting them to like, you know, be entrepreneurs basically. So it's, it has that content flywheel. Then it looks at the production value 
you may want to change cameras, whatever, but you don't even necessarily change it. You just need to improve it, right? Mm-hmm. So we talked about earlier, we could lift the, lift the camera, right? Sure. We could look it down. And then at the last point, then it just has to become a volume game because if you're doing the first one and the second one without the last one, then you're still running into problems, right? Because exactly. you don't exactly. know where you're at. So Dakota Robertson always writes about this saying like, you could have the best content in the world, but no distribution and no one gives a shit because they didn't see it. I didn't see it, right? If you're putting out these killer tweets and no there one sees go. them, yeah. well, like, who cares? Because no one saw them. And man, that's like me on Twitter. I don't, I don't even manage Twitter and I know I should put more time into it. But when it comes down to the other stuff, it has to be a volume play first, right? Mm. It's also mm. like, where where is the audience? So I think it's like increasing the volume, increasing the, you know, the specificity of it. So how like specific we're trying to get good content and mm-hmm. solving that problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the first step. And when I often will work with someone initially, we'll do like an audit. So I'll open up their YouTube because that's kind of the best way to visit them initially. Yeah. And I look at their episodes, their branding, their design, how it looks. It's usually kind of shit. So we need to fix that. <laughs> yeah. And then look at the quality of the episodes. I had a recording on Zoom. We got to stop that. And then it's like, okay, how much volume do we put out? Not a lot. So we basically ne- neutralize all of these at yeah. once. You know? Okay. So I'll okay. give you a simple example. We took on that new client just yesterday. And the first step is like to get a bunch of episodes edited in like 24 hours, get them scheduled out, and then just spend the next couple of weeks just working on short form, you know, because what works and what scales is simplicity. And the more volume you can do in that area, and if they become winners, you can bring it into LinkedIn and keep mm. going from there. Yeah. So, first of all, I really appreciate, thank you very much for that, for that feedback. And I like, I really like how, when you bring it back to those three pillars, it makes things so much simpler on like, what uh, what direction I should yeah. take because it's like ah oh, I know you know when you analyze it like that I'm like okay this is probably the area that is not working out uh, that hasn't been strong enough exactly exactly um, Darren man I think me and you could sit and talk for I think a thousand fucking hours but I'm gonna try to you know round uh, 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 conclude and round this off for the day um, I wanted to ask you so okay my dream my dream with is to do my podcast full time mm. uh, and like the consulting the, the my business is what I do as a means to get to this dream you know this is what I want to do for the rest of my life just sit down have this conversation and if I'm getting paid for it too mm. I'm in fucking heaven I've won if that's when I get to that point I've won I already have that in one way but we need more of them yeah. so my question to you is with everything you're doing with like the podcast, with your business, I guess, what's the dream for you? What's that end goal? What are, what are we doing all this work for? What are we working towards? I'm already living it. I'm nothing else to change, right? Because for me, it's always the impact play. It's building kickoff sessions to be like the biggest impact for young people, to live a richer and more filling life. But then also the business is also my curiosity, right? Because mm-hmm. I enjoy the game of business. I enjoy sales. I enjoy interacting with people. And I do want to build like a multi-million dollar company off the back of my podcast and they both work side by side the better i become as a, like an entrepreneur and a founder i can feed this into my podcast really nicely right? sure yeah so they both grow side by side and mm. that's the biggest thing right so we want a very systematized strong business that's going to be continuously growing you know i think it's like 0.4 percent of companies of all time have ever got to 10 million a year in revenue so as like an ambitious target of course we're gonna we're gonna crawl before we walk and then for kickoff sessions it's about keep growing it, keep consistently moving. And it's like a train at this stage. I couldn't yeah. slow it down if I wanted to. Yeah. And it's just ingrained in my identity. And it's the it's the lotto test, right? If you win the lotto, what would you do? I would still do the exact same thing. I would be building a business that I enjoy. Sure. And then I would also be recording podcasts. So yeah. nothing really changes, you know what I mean? And my days are kind of, of course, like there's ups and downs and there's shit shows, but that's part of just being in the arena, right? Yeah. Um, that's what I would want to do anyway. And that's basically it. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. That's how that that you and I can genuinely, I can tell you genuinely feel that. You know, you're not just saying like, "Oh, I'm living my dream." I see it, you know, in you. And the fact that it sounds like you're in a place where you're comfortable, not comfortable, but like you're very confident and comfortable about where we are right now and where we're about to, like, you know. Well, we've done we the inner work, right? So exactly. I worked in finance, yeah. I worked in tech, and I realized I wanted a way out of it. And then I looked at different ways. I looked at maybe building a startup, and then I looked at what that entailed, and I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I mean, the tech startup, yeah, the yeah, VC-backed yeah. startup. I was like, I do not want to do that. And then 
okay, what did I want to do? I wanted to record full time, which is basically what I do, and then build a big business on the back of it. And like for me, we have big aspirations with the business, and that's why building a business with the goal of obviously building a business is one objective. And then with the podcast, that feeds into it, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I think that was the whole idea was like, how can I engineer what I really want to do, which is recording full time, no matter what. And like, I kind of only complain. And this and this keeps this is the engine that keeps this, of course. this going. Exactly. But they work yeah. sy- symbiotic. Exactly. Right? You might get someone here that comes there. Exactly. 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 Yeah, but yeah. the way I think about it is that, you know, I can't have much complaint. It's Friday morning in Dubai. <laughs> it's, we're just chilling. You know what I mean? I'm going to go to the gym after this. Yes, sir. Just chill at the gym for a bit. And yeah, then yeah. I'm going to like a different hotel on the Palm today. Like, life is good. It's life's, chill. Life is you good. Know? We have problems, but it's a problem solution continuum. When you solve one problem, you start the next, exactly. next one, right? Exactly. Uh, and as we say, as we say over here, we say, Alhamdulillah, you know, looks like you're in, you know, we're comfortable, we're grateful. This is where we are. This is where we're good. Um, just got two more questions, uh, actually, three more questions for you, Darren, because I wanted to make sure I ask you this one. I don't, don't forget this one. When it, com- so I've, when it comes to reaching out to guests, mm-hmm. what's your approach because i've seen some of the guests you've had on the podcast i'm like wow there's some quite you know uh quite like notable guests guests that i would you know even like to speak to i noticed you spoke to chris i spoke to chris uh chris doe yeah i spoke uh, yeah i I actually did his workshops when he came here for two days yeah so and i've been following his work for a while and then i that's how i got him on the podcast and kind of like what you were saying there was a comment someone left on youtube first of all my youtube is dog shit but like there was one comment and like the 20 views that someone saw he's like I've watched a lot of Chris's stuff no one's asked him questions or approached him in this way and you met him in person no uh, Chris you, you interviewed him in person no it, unfortunately it was when he was um, back in the states um, but fuck it I'll, tell, I'll, I'll, I'll take that when it comes to reaching out to guests what's your philosophy because mine is I don't really have I, I think for me, I don't really have one because anyone could, if you, my rule, if I want to bring you on the podcast is, do you do something that I find interesting? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do I think you could add value? Do I want to learn from you? Yes. Okay. Come on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you, there's, there's like, there's like tiers of guests. Of course. You know what I mean? So when you start moving into the B's and the A, the A tier, and then there's the S tier, you know, when you start moving <laughs> in that direction, your outreach that works for like 99% of people might not work for that 1% of necessarily. So what's your philosophy when it comes to that? So I call it the why you, why me, and why now philosophy. So when I'm reaching out to a guest, it's why you. So why is it that I'm genuinely interested in what you do? So if it's Chris Do, I follow a lot of Chris's stuff. I love his approach on design. I love his approach as a design entrepreneur and the creative side. And I tell him that. I'm like, I watched these videos. They were sick. I like that. Why me is the aspect of what I've done in my story as well as the social proof. Like I've had a lot of guests that are his like, you know, close friends. We've ran up a ton of numbers. We've done like 40 million views on YouTube and basically showing my credibility slash social, social proof and why now is basically the act of urgency. So it's like, hey, you're coming out with a book, you're launching a new course, I'm in Dubai, you're in Dubai, let's, let's do it. Let's do yeah, it now, yeah, right? yeah. And that kind of philosophy works really, really well. And we just do it omni-channel, LinkedIn, Instagram, email. I get more success on email. Yeah, know? email's been your best one. LinkedIn's been very powerful for me. I, either or, it depends, depends what they are. I remember I started with a lot of LinkedIn only kind of guests, but then mm. I kind of, veered more into kind of YouTubers and entrepreneurs in general. And as a result, email works well, but that's the philosophy. That's the philosophy. I really like that. Why me, why you, and why now? I think that's a very good framework for any, for any guest that you're going to bring on the show. It makes, that encapsulates all the three areas of why you would have a guest on the show. Exactly. Um, Darren, man, um, I just have two more questions for you. Now, these are questions that we ask all our guests. Um, I'm curious, I think I know the answer to one of them, but let's see. Um, looking back either personally or professionally, I think a lot of time we forget about the good things that we've done or the Mm -hmm. things that we're proud of. So what are the things, if I ask you, what are you most proud of for yourself, Darren? What would you say? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I would say when I was younger, I was like, trying to become a professional athlete I was like a 100 meter sprinter as a rugby player and I basically blew up my kneecap and at that point I dislocated so badly that there was no point I was no I was never going to be able to get to a high level again and it was like the best thing that ever happened to me because at that point 
I had lost like everything. My 17 years of existence were all built around sport and no education, nothing. And I had to unlearn everything that I knew to relearn how to operate again. And that's when I went down the philosophy of like studying a lot of time and I was doing a lot of things with my exams and so on. And if that didn't happen, and then my response to that, which was like, okay, no one gives a fuck that you can't do what you're going meant to, that you wanted to do. Now you have to escape your current reality and move towards like a, like a new world. So I've had that philosophy since I was like 17. And then when I went on in my career and I wanted to make more handbrake turns, subconsciously or consciously, I could always reference that and say like, well, I did it then, I can do it again. And I had done that several times over and it allows me to reinvent myself no matter like what the circumstances is. So if AI took over all of our jobs and crush all our companies, I know I could go again. Because yeah. for me, I don't need a lot to go again. I just need some chicken and rice and a fucking <laughs> $20 gym. And I can spend nine months building a business, right? Because sure. most people, they their drivers are different. But for me, a lot of it is internal anyway. So yeah. it's more like a game and a philosophy. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah. And honestly, man, I think those are... That feeling that no matter what happens, I'll be okay. Mm. is the most powerful feeling like to have you're unstoppable then because yeah even you might you will lose sometimes we're not always going to win but if you know like you have that confidence internally um that like no matter what happens i need very basic things you know to to satisfy like my needs i'll be all right and i'll figure it out that Mm. is a that's what everyone's it's abundance it's abundance and if anyone can and if you can get to that level internally i think you know you're in a pretty good spot uh, Darren, for my last question, this is something that we ask all our guests. What is the message that you'd like everyone to take home with them today? Good question. With the internet, you have the ability to think. And for many years, most people were given a path and given a rule book and given a textbook and they were forced to follow it for many years. But it's up to you to be able to think clearly and critically. And if you can remove yourself from the outcome and look at like truly what you want like deep down and what you want to, what you're trying to achieve and just identify that walk through that process and really follow that path then you like you'll have like a fulfilling life you'll have a life that you're like proud of you'll have a life that you want to do but if you fill the void with vices with dumb stuff with things that were put in front of you with a path that was given to you you're going to have a miserable life and Rough roads and smooth and smooth roads and rough. <laughs> what a way to finish the episode, man. Uh, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. I love that message. Um, you know, just a reminder for everyone to not focus on the outcome so much because I think the world and everything about the world now all pushes us to focus on that thing. So it is, it is not, we're not saying this is easy, but keeping that in mind, on the tough days especially is, is gonna you know is, will really really help you darren man i wanted to say thank you so so much for coming on the show this has been an absolute fucking pleasure i knew this was gonna you know some sometimes i'm sure you do sometimes you know you're bringing a guest on and like we've never interacted but i'm like i know it's gonna be a good recording yeah, cool. you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know you just feel that chemistry um thank you so much for everything man i really appreciate your time coming on the show you taught me so much about podcasting about content about mindset and i think Anyone looking to start a podcast, anyone thinking about podcasts, YouTube, content creation, there's so much they can take from this episode. So I want to say thank you so much for that, man. Um, where can people find you, connect with you, reach out, or, uh, let us know. Just look up Darren Lee on the internet. You'll Darren figure, Lee. You'll figure me out somewhere. You'll find him. He's, find him somewhere. he's pretty good with the content, I must say. He's all <laughs> over the place. If, if you can find me, it's a problem for my team. They've got to go figure it out. Exactly. And let us know. We will tell them. Guys, uh, Darren, thank you so much, man. Really Cheers, appreciate brother. it. Guys, thank you so much for listening as always. Make sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe to the podcast at Hope It Helps Pod on Instagram. And as always, guys, hope it helps. Peace. Awesome, man.